Okay, hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of On the Rest from Off the Cuff. Today we have another great review for you from the brand Spinnaker. Now, a little bit about them. They're basically an independent brand um, that offers a classic nautical design aesthetic um, in an absolutely affordable and modern package. Now, in terms of the type of watch this is, of course, we consider this a dive watch, some key common characteristics in design language. When you're looking for a dive watch, you're going to be looking for water resistance, typically with some type of screw down crown. You're going to want something that's tough, legible with a dive time bezel, and a diver's extension is always nice if on bracelet. Now this is their very popular Dumas model, um, but then this particular iteration, um, it's actually one of the four new colorways. Um, also, it's on this excellent new bracelet, so I'm really excited about that. You guys may remember me reviewing a couple of the other iterations, uh, the previous iterations of this watch, and I was very impressed with it. One of the things that I thought was kind of a missed opportunity was for a bracelet like this with the angular kind of hexed style. Um, you guys saw I even did some aftermarket pairings. Uh, so very cool to see this one just kind of out of the factory, out of the gates, paired really well and everything flows really nicely with the case and makes it feel like honestly just a more complete watch. So with all that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand and take a closer look. All right guys, so as you can see, not too much has changed. Of course, the particular color combination is gonna be a slight variance compared to what we've seen in the past, but this is gonna be the blue dial variant. Um, there's gonna be other dial options, other colorways that are be available. Definitely check the links below in the description for more information on that. It actually should be going live the same day that this video is being published. So um, there should be no waiting from that perspective. Uh, in terms of the dimensions here, guys, you're getting 44 millimeter diameter, a 48 millimeter lug to lug, and a 15 millimeter thickness. Uh, this is all 316L stainless steel, brushed and polished case. Some really nice touches in terms of the beveling and the angles there. Uh, so not overly simplified. Uh, they definitely did find some places to say, hey, look, like here's what we can do, what we're capable of, and really kind of showcase the best that they have to offer. So good on Spinnaker for really taking this design um, and not only executing it, um, you know, at a very basic level, but also, you know, taking the time to have some nice fine elements and details. And then you see that get carried over really nicely to this new bracelet, which is really going to be the star of the show. Now, when it comes to some of the basics about this watch, of course, it does have a sapphire crystal um, that has inner AR coating, which is great. Um, the, the crystal's flat, so it's going to be much less reflective in general, um, which is wonderful. The bezel is 120 click unidirectional. Nice action, not the easiest thing to grab, honestly. The angles wise it can be a little bit slippery. But uh, lines up pretty well on the money there. Maybe even better than I had it aligned at the beginning of the video. So let me give it a quick wipe really quick here, just to make sure we're not getting too many of my fingerprints on it. Um, but yeah, so functional from that standpoint, uh, how many of you actually use dive time bezels on a daily basis? Not too many. I mean, I wear dive watches pretty often and, you know, I, I really don't use it very often. It is something uh, that does give you a little bit of a fidget factor, something to play with, which is great. Um, for me, that's not one of the big selling points on this piece. It's more so the aesthetic and kind of the overbuilt nature and the, uh, just overall well-finished um, considering for the money, right? This thing is like $400 about direct from Spinnaker, which doesn't make it cheap, but it also is, you know, I wouldn't think a lot of people would consider that, you know, unattainable or expensive. So it's kind of in a, in a bit of a sweet spot from that standpoint. The crown is screwed down and signed, as you can see. Very cool. The little N in Spinnaker. So I do like that. Um, and then the case back is a display case back. 
which is quite nice. And you can see that Seiko NH35 movement, which is gonna be the equivalent of their 4R35. Um, so very basic, but it does the job, great shock resistance, etc. cetera. Um, and you can see that it is a, you know, it does have a solid end link, solid links. Uh, the links are connected by push pins. Uh, you do get three micro adjusts here and a, an actual uh, stamped dive extension. So you can put that over your wetsuit. Very nice. Um, push button lock there, milled folding section. And then you also get a, another lock here. So double locking. You get the push button plus the flip lock on there. And it's it does the job. Um, you know, overall to the touch. Uh, again, this isn't some luxury level of finishing. Um, you know, some people might consider it just a, a hair sharp. Um, but I wouldn't consider it uh, unfinished feeling or anything like that. Uh, it's just, you know, again, it's not meant to be a luxury piece. So uh, some of you will take that sharpness and chalk it up to precision. Some of you may take that sharpness and chalk it up to feeling a tad unfinished. It really depends on your preferences from that standpoint. I'd say it's it's right there where it's, it's you can make an argument for either way, uh, but for me, it doesn't feel unfinished. It just feels like it, it should as a tool watch. Now, um, this dial has always been very, very interesting. It's a cool layered dial. You do get the date at the three o'clock, which is being covered by the big old minute hand right now. Um, but I do enjoy that it is different. Again, that's one of the things that's hard to find within this price point. Um, I, some could even argue that under a thousand dollars, it's tough to find watches that feel very original um, and not just original, but cohesive. So there are some very original dive watches or some big chunky dive, but in terms of the cohesion in design um, and feeling like something that's been actualized as an actual theme, um, I, I'd say it's tough to find. And I think with the Dumas and Spinnaker brand, they've been able to realize a, a complete theme here, especially now on this bracelet, which I can really appreciate. Now, um, the hands are very nicely done. You can see uh, pops of color there, different types of finishing, which is great. You get the matte finish there, um, so it's gonna hold the light really well. Um, also, you're getting Swiss Superluminova, so I'm looking forward to showing you guys this. I'm sure you can tell right now that it's gonna be a bit of a loom beast. Uh, if I hold it close here, you can see um, even day loom, this thing is quite strong. Look at that. So this is going to be one um, that uh, is very strong in, in the ways of the loom force. <laughs> so looking forward to sharing that with you guys in some loom shots later on. Uh, but in terms of the rest of the specs here, water resistance to 30 atmospheres or 300 meters or 1,000 feet, which is great. 22 millimeter lug. So if you did want to change this out to something else, you still do have quite a lot of options. The bracelet does taper from about 23 and a half. So, uh, even though it's a 22 millimeter lug, the uh, very smartly Spinnaker has made the bracelet step out so that it really aligns with the slope and the edges of this actual case, which is something you can't easily match when you are adding something aftermarket. So kudos to them for really um, stepping it up and look at the way it just all comes together again that cohesion in design i can really really appreciate that so with that said let's actually get this piece on wrist um, and see how it wears okay guys as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist this watch is no slouch it fills the wrist really well i don't think it overpowers it it does have considering the actual width of the watch um you know i think the lug to lug is actually uh, you know pretty restrained it's 44 wide by only 48 long and then because the lugs are actually hooded and quite stubby 
Um, I think it actually helps this thing wear really nice. Almost gives you some of the vibes of an integrated bracelet. And you guys know those integrated bracelet watches, you can typically go much larger um, than you would with traditional lugs. So uh, really nice from that aspect. Of course, when you get up close and there's gonna be a little bit of distortion from the camera lens, it's gonna feel maybe a bit overpowering and oversized. But one of the things visually that was very smart that Spinnaker did is they do push those indices to the center of the dial um, and they create things that kind of fill the space and that will center your eye a little bit more um, more precisely towards the center of the dial which kind of can give you a visual shrinking effect now they didn't push this super far but you know by having the indices not pushed all the way out and just slightly inside of that kind of outer track and then having an inner track with the 24 hour scale I think it really helps uh, visually keep the weight down. Now, in terms of the physical weight and mass, this is a chunky watch, and it's it's not some lightweight affair. It's not made out of titanium. This isn't some you know um, 38 millimeter retro design. Uh, this is a, a retro design more akin to something in the 70s versus the 60s, um, and with that comes just you know uh, overbuilt that overbuilt nature comes out and these harsh angles but the nice thing is it still comes together look at the way that bracelet just plugs right into this case and the light plays over it i mean this thing's gorgeous if this had uh you know a higher end brand on it and uh, you know uh, i think you could really garner a lot more visibility and excitement for this piece it's nothing against spinnaker i'm just saying that considering like what you have here um, this thing is a lot of fun and honestly i'd say even smaller brands like if some upstart uh came out of the blue with a design like this it would they'd probably be um very praised and then at the same time if some mainstream you know swatch group or japanese brand came out with something like this they would also be um within high praise because you are getting 30 atmospheres or, or 300 meters of water resistance you're getting sapphire crystal hacking hand windable movement so there's a lot to really really enjoy here um, you're also getting a watch that has an actual divers extension which is great so it's a pretty serious piece of kit um, and yeah I, I think it's it's definitely worthy of a look if you're into that and i mean i think guys that just love big chunky dive watches add this to the list you're gonna want one of these um and then for those of you that just kind of enjoy divers as an everyday watch this adds a lot of uh hip fun and it's uh, you know there's a certain level of refinement again it's not luxury refinement but just more refinement in design and that just cohesive overall aesthetic that they were going for that I feel that they really hit uh, right on the head from that standpoint. So let's go ahead and get this off the wrist, um, lay it out for some loom shots, low light transition and closing. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the lights. Oh yes, as you can see, very nice loom. You can actually even see that the crown itself is gloomed as well. So as you can see right there, actually let me do this. Let me even get my black light if I can find it here in the dark and uh, give you a little, as you can see there, the crown is now also, which I don't believe it was in previous models. So very cool from that standpoint, dig that a lot. But man, you guys can see this thing is impressive. It, it lights up really well. That bezel insert, um, I believe, is just mineral or uh, some type of acrylic. Uh, definitely check the specs uh, in the link, or it should be in that kind of initial roll of specs there. But one thing I like to do when we're looking at loom shots is also work in some low light transition because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're going to be coming in and out of the building, maybe walking underneath an overhang or to the shade of a tree, or just spending time in inside of your favorite automobile. So it is nice to see how a watch will render in less than optimal lighting. And what we even like to do is get down into some harsh lighting situations, very high contrast, that typically would expose any type of defects within that finishing. But you guys can see there that the light glides right over that brushing 
um, very uniformly there so nice clean brushing um, really any kind of haziness you're seeing in the polishing is probably just from my uh, oil on my fingers so very very nice from that standpoint and also it's nice to see the way that this blue renders you can see it's very transitional check that out more of that deep midnight um, hue and then the light because it's matted can catch it and just make it very very bright um, while the bezel insert itself remains very very dark so you're gonna get kind of some two-tone play and then you're gonna get some tones where it's like oh those match perfectly and the midnight kind of blue range and then you get over in the high contrast and it's almost like you have a little bit of a two-tone style so I think that's very nice very cool and kind of to be expected when it comes to uh, you know a matte dial with a glossy style of insert and you can see that yeah you know it's fading a little bit there but that's more so because the camera offset i'd say in person that bezel insert still going away um <clears throat> pumping away in terms of the light and the bright um but uh it definitely is paling a bit in comparison to the uh the rest of the watch you can see there just to give you a quick idea how quickly that charge was. Again, I didn't just, you know, this didn't get a real charge from being outdoors for about 10 minutes or anything like that. This was really just off of the studio lights from the couple of minutes that I've had uh, the review shooting here. Now guys, in terms of closing thoughts on the wrist, guys, very bold wear, tons of presence and personality, very clear retro vibe. Um, and it's very enhanced by its color palette. Uh, they could have easily just kind of gone halfway and uh, just given us a very cool look um, with more sedate colors. Um, but I love that they kind of mixed in some more vibrant plays in terms of the color contrast and layouts. And I'll say this is probably even one of the safer um, selections when you look at the actual, you know, out of the four different uh, colorways, you'll find some really honestly pretty exciting stuff. Um, and they do play around more with the kind of two-tone aesthetic there. Um, here, this is a little bit, you know, more of a blue on blue affair, um, albeit, you know, a much darker blue and kind of more of a medium uh, blue, um, well, depending on the lighting, as you guys noticed. So, um, in terms of comparable models, um, you know, it, it's tough, honestly. There's a lot that's within this space of under 500 bucks, um, and, you know, there's a lot to like that's there. Uh, but I will say that Spinnaker have been doing their job. They've been releasing, you know, solid watches and they seem to keep getting better and better. So they are a brand on the rise. Um, so I have to give them props there. Uh, are they, you know, fulfilling these crazy niche um, things with like exciting materials or dials and all like all that stuff that like watch geeks really flip out over? No. But they are providing watches that uh, you know the general public will actually take an interest to and probably buy a decent volume. So uh, it's one of those things. This is really meant to be kind of a mass-produced product, and they do a good job of it, which means it's going to be readily available. Um, unlike some of those more niche brands, um, especially when it comes to divers, a lot of times those things can sell out in pre-orders and all that. Um, so. Yeah, I, I will say the benefits of scale um, of, do pay dividends here in this case. Um, if I was a, to make any critiques, um, I think this is a great watch. It would be cool to see a smaller version of it, but I get why it's big. Um, you know, maybe put in a different movement with a smoother uh, Hertz rate there. So this has a, a Seiko movement, but maybe if we put a Miyota in there um, or even a Swiss movement, I think it would be worth it for the markup. Um, because it's the case itself and the bracelet they stand up um, sure it's not screw in links um, but it all feels very very solid and all, all very cohesive and just really well put together so on and my you know from my point of view guys bottom line on this one is it's one of Spinnaker's best and it got even better and just feels like a more complete package but let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you like the video please do hit like and if you Excuse me, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys.